Well, right, guys, to see some of you are already here, um, welcome to today's live stream. Um, the, today, basically, I want to talk about uh, times when Finastri stopped working for me, um, what happened during those times, and what kind of context they had, and basically uh, how I was able to overcome it, of my results with Finastri, right? Because, again, this is important to kind of uh, show uh, how effective Finastri can be if there are no underlying problems, right? And uh, again, this is me in 2008. Right. I had a severe hair loss, uh, a lot of uh, diffuse thinning uh, all over my scalp. You can basically see uh, the problems I was having. And at that time, I had solved the online problems regarding my diet, regarding my nutrition deficiencies. Those things were solved uh, like a couple of years back in the past. Right? And this, is, uh, this was something I did talk about previously. Right? But this is basically my situation right before I started with Nasper, Right. So basically, severe uh, issues uh, regarding diffuse thinning. My hair was basically very weak at that time, and they were easily pulled out. And I had a lot of uh, training problems, uh, and uh, yeah, basically you can see uh, diffuse thinning patterns. So, so basically, what happened is that I started at this stage a week later with Pinasti when I had taken those pictures, uh, those three here. Uh, and basically, what happened is that I was able to thicken up uh, my hair gradually over time. Right? And again. Thing is, is that the first thing you will notice when you start with it is that uh, there will be a decrease in hair shedding, and the decrease in hair shedding doesn't happen right away. Uh, for me, it did take um, around six to eight weeks, I would say, possibly uh, around eight weeks before I noticed that shedding was less and I was not able to pull out as easily my hair anymore. And um, basically, what happened next is that after around four and a half, uh, like a time mark or four and a half months into taking nastri, my hair started to. Uh, kind of thicken up, right? And this is basically uh, four and a half, five months into Finastri. Right? And uh, again, uh, it was huge win compared to where my situation was before. And here is other picture. Right? Uh, this is basically four and a half, five months into it. Um, and this is um, around six and a half months into it. Um, you can basically see that things started to improve quite nicely. And this is uh, me in uh, seven, seven and a half months uh, into Finastri. So basically, this is uh, beginning of May uh, 2009. Right? Uh, nice improvement where I was before. Right? I was uh, very happy at this, uh, this stage. So, And basically, what happened is that my results just keep improving, and they got better and better. And basically, I was, at the end, I was able to, at one year's mark around that time, uh, I was able to uh, uh, basically taken up to this stage here and um, basically what happened next is that it just keep improving and I got to this stage here and this one here. Right? Uh, basically I was uh, very happy with my results uh, at this point. Right? And again it was not uh, perfect but I was happy compared to where things were before. And my hair basically had bounded, rebounded to a healthy ones at this stage. Uh, but what happened next is that uh, I unfortunately got uh, skull problems uh, and basically what happened is that um, after around two months later, after I had taken this picture here, uh, my hair started to fall out rapidly. Like uh, this basically is two months later. And the reason why my hair started to fall out is that I was traveling, uh, there was temperature changes or climate changes, uh, different diet, uh, different uh, water quality, uh, different uh, basically mm, my scalp basically got a lot of sebum in it. Uh, when I was losing hair, there was um, uh, two to three hair follicles attached to the hair, same uh, hair that was falling out in the yellow bulbs to them. Uh, and uh, my scalp was basically uh, not feeling well. Uh, it was basically typical signs of inflammation. And uh, it basically continued from uh, this stage here. And uh, two months later from this picture to this picture. So this was taken around uh, uh, I would say around the beginning of December or something, 2010, and this is a um, picture of me in around February 2011. Uh, and you can see basically in two months time, I went from this uh, situation to this situation. And uh, basically four months before, my hair was perfect. Uh, so it went very fast because of influential problems I was having in my scalp. Um, and at that time, uh, I didn't quite know how to address them, so I basically started to address them at this stage here, uh, with uh, applying steroid creams, um, applying uh, steroid shampoos, a kind of shampoo. So basically, this was a situation uh, that helped me to uh, kind of gain back some ground again. 
And I also switched it to the dust tree because at that time I was uh, thinking that it was because of BHD spiking uh, that was I was losing here. And I was assuming that finastry was not effective anymore. And uh, again, like if there are no online problems, then finastry stays effective for long term. Uh, but when there are online problems that happened in my case with the implement issues back in 2011, I started to lose here again. And uh, it happened because of implementing problems and my scalp uh, basically was out of balance. And because of uh, it, those things happened regarding my shedding and regarding my progression, because I was losing ground very fast because of those problems. And uh, afterwards, uh, I was able to gain back ground. At this stage, I did stop uh, with uh, the task trade because my problem was not DHT at this point. It was because of implementary issues. So there was kind of no point of taking stronger, uh, more potent drug like the task trade because uh dht was already addressed with finastrid i just had those implementary problems on my skull so it had to be sold and again remember that um, when it when someone uh, says that for example dht is causing information they most likely are talking about micro information like a micro information would be something that would cause the redness around here follicles uh, and that would be a different type of information than the one i'm talking uh, that i was having in 2011. It was basically full blown inflammation with redness, itchiness, a lot of sebum production, uh, a lot of uh, oilness of the skin, like basically scalp is out of balance. That's a different thing. So we need to uh, differentiate between those two conditions. Right? Because micro inflammation can be helpful uh, or helped with, for example, by addressing DHT, uh, one of the ways. So. All right. So basically, what happened is that uh, I went back to, to Finastrid. And I had those ups and downs with, um, with uh, uh, like basically applying steroids to my scalp. It did help me, but uh, again, I was uh, having ups and downs because when one is applying steroids, what happens is that one has to cycle them. Right? And I have been spoke, speaking, talking about it in the previous live streams uh, that one cannot uh, take them or apply them or forever on the scalp because uh, one has to stop and uh, restart uh, with other ones and the switch between uh, lighter ones. And I was doing it. Uh, it did kind of help me to keep my hair at this uh, time. Uh, but basically, what happened is that at some point I decided to uh, have more natural approach. Uh, so basically, this is my timeline: 2011. Uh, during 2011, uh, and this is basically 2012. Uh, so somewhere 2012. Uh, and the uh, end of 2012, I had a quite good. Um, See, like a quite good, um, manage, I was able to quite nicely manage my inflammatory problems. But what happened in 2012, at the end of it, I got sunburn on my skull. And again, my inflammation flared up uh, a lot. And what happened is that uh, I was losing ground again. And this is basically one month later, I was uh, having issues to my skull. My skull again had a shedding. And uh, it got unbalanced because of uh, inflammatory problems, uh, because of sunburn uh, that was basically uh, aggregated by online problems because my scalp was still kind of in inflammated state. So, and uh, basically what happened next is that I was able to solve uh, those issues. And uh, at some point I was able to start with growth stimulation and oxygen magnelling. And basically I was able to get some results with it. But uh, in this webinar, I want to talk uh, uh, exactly about uh, only about finasteride. So, and um, next time I had issues when finasteride stopped working was in 2016. And 2016, what happened is that I overstone my skull. I was doing too much of my drilling because I got kind of greedy. Like I did see awesome results in my drilling noxy application, but I just wanted to have more and more results. But there is a point or there is a stage that you reach. There is kind of no point to keep stimulating the skull. Uh, like uh, in my case, basically what happened is that I keep uh, doing it. I was wanting to have more here. And uh, it ended up with the skull problems again. And also ended up uh, with shedding and uh, dermatitis because of all of those problems that I was kind of uh, doing for myself to get more here. And this is the beginning of the year, and uh, this is around April 2016, and this is the beginning of the summer, and the uh, end of the summer, around August, uh, beginning of uh, September. So, and you can basically see how fast I did lose ground. And again, it was not because finastrid was not working, it was because my online problems was causing issues. 
And when I solve my online problems, basically I was able to have a nice recovery again, right? Because again, Finastrid works very well to address the DHT angle, uh, but those problems that I was having here was not because of the DHT, it was because of other things. All right. And uh, 2017, uh, basically, yeah, this was, uh, Basically, again, I had a dermatitis issue. So in January, everything was fine. But um, in the uh, in the beginning of around March 2017, I had issues with dermatitis. So I solved that problem. Um, and uh, what happened here is that I was working a lot. And because of working a lot and not sleeping well, I also had uh, some thinning problem on my hair, basically increased shedding. Uh, and uh, here become lighter in color and uh, they were falling out uh, more frequently and uh, it basically shows again that um, stress uh, lack of sleep uh, can affect the hair quality even if one is having good diet uh, is blocking the EHT is using uh, minoxidil or other growth stimulant uh, it still may not be enough if there is lack of uh, basically essential sleep and also too much stress so. Uh, but I was able to solve those problems and I was able to gain background again. Um, this is me 2018. Uh, again, everything was fine until the point where I got too much stress and too much um, uh, to, to lack of sleep. And basically those things again affected my hair and basically made them to, to get lighter in color and uh, have a higher shedding rate than usual. Uh, and I was able to recover them. And uh, again, I was able to re rebound back to uh, healthy here. And in 2019, that I want to take uh, more in, uh, in details because I think it could be quite useful for you guys to see changes in my year in 2019 from beginning of the year to end of the year. And I will open a different folder to show you what happened during the time. So this is basically me in January 2019. And uh, I had nicely recovered my hair. Uh, everything was fine. Uh, this is uh, around February, end of February 2019. All good. Uh, again, March, April. Uh, here is my hair under strong sunlight. Uh, you can basically see even in the strong sunlight, it looks uh, very good. And uh, this was June. July, and the problem started to appear in uh, August in 2019. And basically what happened is that I started to work a lot, uh, didn't have enough sleep, uh, was also having a unnecessary high amount of stress, and those things did affect my hair. Uh, and uh, again, I was doing everything with Finastrid, I was doing everything with mic kneeling and uh, having a healthy diet, but because of the sleep, because of the stress, it did affect my hair quality, and I started to have uh, uh, basically problems in my temples. Uh, that is often my weakest uh, area. And uh, here's a few more pictures. What happened is that I started to basically lose ground on my temples uh, at around September 2019. Uh, here's one more. Uh, I can basically also see the structures here. It did change a bit uh, when I was having stress and I was lacking sleep. So and this is me September, uh, end of the September. Uh, you can basically see that there was uh, uh, a lot of uh, problems going on. And again, I didn't have uh, inflammatory problems. Uh, I didn't have any dermatitis, but because just because of lack of sleep and high amount of stress, it did affect my hair really negatively. So, uh, so uh, I was able to kind of get control of it. It was kind of ups and downs. <clears throat> uh, this is me in October. Mm. And this is me, uh, other picture in October. Then again, my stress did increase. Um, so I did affect my hair again in November. And here is a picture of me in December, right? So there was some damage done during uh, that time. Uh, in January, uh, I was able to recover my hair because I was on vacation and everything was basically fine. Right? So uh, it went well. Um, and I also want to get back to the time when I actually was taking wrong or finasteries that was expired. And uh, I did speak about it on previous live stream, but I can take it up uh, once again. Um, so this is me in 2020. Right? And basically, uh, beginning of the year was, uh, was good for the year, but then I ran out of uh, Propecia and I had to take, uh, or I ended up taking expired finasteries and it did affect my hair very negatively. 
And you, you guys, for example, if you want to uh, check more about it, you can check out my videos from uh, from thousand, beginning of 2020 to the end of 2020, because you can clearly see how my, my hair situation got worse in, in uh, around June, July of 2020. And it peaked that its worst was around uh, September. Uh, so basically in the, around two and a half, three months, I did lose like, a lot of ground regarding my hair because I was taking finasteride that was just not working. Right? And again, I didn't have any inflammatory problems at that time. I didn't have any dermatitis. My diet was good. My sleep was good. Uh, stress was minimal. But still, I was losing ground because I was taking finasteride that just hadn't, didn't have any effect. And uh, it was basically expired cross pills that I was taking at that time. Uh, you can see what happened is that I started to thin out on my um, uh, temples. Uh, you can see basically shadow, kind of shadow on them. And uh, here is one more. Uh, so this is basically a typical sign for me that there is definitely something wrong going on. And again, I had a lot of uh, more heading during the time, uh, but um, I was still assuming that uh, finosity was working. I thought it was not working, so I did lose ground. And when I got back of uh, like uh, regular uh, finances that I usually take at uh, the end of September, I was able to recover nicely. This is around November and December. Uh, so uh, basically, my point here is last thing today is to show you guys importance of um, seeing that uh, yes, DHT is very important, but there is still other things that can affect it. This effectiveness uh, and I. You need to figure out basically what could be causing that finasteride is not working anymore. Right? If you have been taking finasteride for uh, some time without some results, and then suddenly uh, one day you are starting to lose ground again, you have to figure out what what could be possible cause of it. Right? Because uh, you can see that uh, for me, uh, if I don't block DHT, my here like in this example here from 2020 when I was taking uh, expired finasteride or uh, Proscar, uh, I did start to lose ground because uh, I was not blocking DHT. But at the same time, when I was having uh, dermatitis, when I was having inflammatory problems, and also when I didn't sleep well and I had a lot of stress, it still affected my hair all in a very negative way, even if uh, when I was taking uh, potent and functional finasteride. Uh, so we have to look basically both ways, right? Is it something uh, wrong with finasteride itself, or is it basically other factors that are affecting and causing issues? Right? And if you do have uh, problems in your scalp, then basically you will notice that there is. Uh, more itchiness, for example, uh, scalp doesn't feel as it should feel, uh, more tension, uh, visible signs like redness, and so on, right? And uh, if you have, for example, a uh, higher amount of stress, it's also easily to detect it, okay? Uh, it has been increased uh, amount of stress lately. Could it have, have a negative effect, impact on the hair? If yes, so then you need to basically learn how to manage stress better. Uh, same with sleep, for example. Right? So uh, it is about basically troubleshooting what could be a possible issue here. And when you find all the factors that is affecting your, your situation, your treatment, then you have to work on solving it. And then you can sustain those results uh, because Pinastri itself is not going to lose effectiveness right? because it addresses the DHT angle. And uh, basically, if you don't do anything to uh, worsen or make your follicles more sensitive to DHT, Something else will keep working as it has for me uh, because I have been on it for uh, 14 years now. So, all right. Uh, so, uh, this was uh, what I wanted to take up on today's presentation. Uh, I will check up uh, the chat now uh, the questions you've been asking today. Uh, okay, Rahman, the first one mm, about question about. Uh, uh, question about uh, if working uh, besides from computer without stress affect hair growth. Uh, I would say it shouldn't because I'm doing kind of the same thing. Like I, I do I work most of my day uh, besides laptop, and uh, it shouldn't be affecting your hair growth. Right? And uh, if you want, for example, like it can affect um, if you want to optimize, for example, your uh, environment you can get, for example, a uh, laptop uh, screen saver. It could be helpful um, for your uh, overall, um, uh, like, uh, to block uh, the negative light from laptop or computer. That could be one way, way to address it. Um, let's see if I remember a name for it. I, I can check it up. Uh, for your, uh, 
So it basically it would be something that uh, could uh, help to block uh, blue light from uh, from the laptop, for example. And uh, just to give you an example, and again, this could apply for you other guys as well, right? If you are, uh, for example, working with a computer all day long, or um, you want something to uh, to use to basically block uh, and protect your eyes, then this could be uh, something to look into. So. Uh, it's basically something like this uh, I was thinking about. Like uh, you can definitely get this one here, for example, as it helps to uh, with your eyes protection and also blocks uh, blue light. Uh, it's like a blue light filter, and you can get also it for uh, for your mob, uh, your phone, for example, or smartphone that you can add it to. So, uh, so there is also uh, examples for it. So. All right. So uh, to get back to live stream questions. Uh, question about uh, from uh, Baba about uh, I wash my hair daily in the winter season. My hair is very dry, and after I wash with mild shampoo. Yes, again, like if you are using a, a mild shampoo that is not harsh for your scalp on your fur here, for example, it could be aloe vera based shampoo, then washing here daily should be fine and shouldn't cause. Uh, uh dryness and it shouldn't cause any other problems right just make sure that the shampoo you're using actually is a mild one and is not uh, amplifying or uh, aggregating the issues that you're actually having so uh leonard asks about a uh, question about dermatologist says that uh, you shouldn't wash here daily yes again like if you are using a strong uh, medical shampoo uh, then you shouldn't wash it daily right because it will uh, affect your scalp environment it will dry out here it will uh, dry out the scalp so uh, it's not ideal but if you are using a mild shampoo uh, that is for everyday use then it's okay uh, then again if you are for example uh, having a lot of uh, seam production a lot of oily skin uh, and you are still working on solving those online problems that are causing it then in the midterm you still need something to clean up your scalp on a daily basis and uh, having for example uh, like i mentioned in the previous uh, comment uh, having um uh, shampoo that is basically aloe vera based and mild for your skin could be uh, uh, one way to address it. Uh, and if, you, for example, in the future, if you are not doing my cleaning every day or uh, frequently uh, during the week, then uh, you also, uh, it's not required to wash it every day. Right? You can, for example, skip and wash it every other day, but you need to find the structures that works for you. Right? That's important. So, all right. Uh, question from Q. Uh, how long uh, after you apply minoxidil do uh, how long after you apply minoxidil do you add oils? I don't uh, add oils that frequently. Like I do apply, uh, for example, argan oil or sequin oil in my scalp uh, once or twice a month uh, to address uh, dryness from my cleaning. Right? Because uh, if I do my cleaning too frequently, then my scalp at some point will become a bit dry, so, so I have to address it. So. Um, and uh, that's basically the only thing I do. I don't apply oils for growth stimulation. And again, it doesn't mean that oils won't work. Uh, there are, for example, oils that can have a, uh, benefits for it, um, for growth stimulation. Like, uh, for example, I have had uh, one guy in the program who, for example, has good benefits from lavender oil uh, that he applies on his scalp. So, so it, it can have effect, um, but it again depends on the context. And depends on uh, chaos progression, what's causing it, and so on. Right? But I personally just apply minoxidil. Um, when I apply oils, it is basically to address dryness from uh, my cleaning, and I just do it once or twice a month. Uh, all right. Uh, next question from John. Uh, Alex, we're taking supplemental pumpkin seed oil take longer time to have effect on hair loss than taking uh, finasteride. Yes, it will uh, have a longer time to have effect from it. Uh, but again, um, the shedding uh, would be one indicator to look for and um, if the shedding starts to decrease after around 10 to 12 weeks of taking salt metal uh, pumpkin seed oil then you know that it is having effect for your hair uh, or uh, your hair follicles uh, on the DHT sensitivity but if it doesn't happen and uh, if you still see that shed is basically the same then it doesn't work uh, for example salt metal on uh, pumpkin seed for example like a supplement form of it um can be beneficial to uh for the hair in early stages of hair loss or for one who is not having that high dht sensitivity right? if there is high dht sensitivity like my case uh, then uh, natural supplements won't have effect 
uh, that basically it, uh, I wouldn't see any difference regarding shredding. So I have to uh, have a more potent uh, drug to address it, unfortunately. Because again, in my case, I did a lot of mistakes when I was uh, younger that basically led to uh, high DHT sensitivity. Uh, so that's that's problem in my case. Uh, Uh, question about vitamin E deficiencies. Yes, uh, it can affect uh, your uh, hair loss at least. So I don't think it will affect your oil production. So, mm. uh, question, question about uh, if I schedule a call, how many days to wait when uh, we can make a call? Uh, like uh, it usually is around uh, two to four days uh, ahead of time. So, depending on my uh, available time. So. Uh, question about uh, I'm 18, my temples are almost lost. What uh, should I do? Uh, again, like you need to figure out what is causing your hair to shred out in your temples at the age of 18. Uh, uh, if you are losing your hair rapidly in less than, for example, six months, then it's most likely some kind of online problems. Uh, checking out, for example, nutrition deficiencies, uh, checking up your diet could be uh, first thing to do uh, or Possibly if you are having some skull problems, the have notices have been noticing that there would be a second thing to do right? because uh, losing here at 18 and uh, having, uh, for example, um, temples that are losing ground fast means often that there is more to it. So uh, question from MM about any mental side effects from Finastrate. Uh, no, uh, it has been fine for me. Uh, I haven't had any issues with finasteride. Again, I've been taking for 14 years. I do microdose it. I take 0 0.5 on daily basis, and uh, it has been fine for me. So, uh, question about what do I think about uh, oral minoxidil at the 2.5? Again, uh, oral minoxidil is something that um, can uh, be used, uh, for example, if there are uh, skull problems, if there are online problems that uh, require a lot of uh, efforts, not to work to solve. And um, one cannot apply minoxidil directly on the skull, but uh, again, I prefer to apply it directly on the areas that actually are, is having hair loss. Because when one takes oral minoxidil, basically it has effect on all, all body, uh, not just isolated uh, areas, but it actually has effect on all body. And it also realizes at once, right? when I apply minoxidil topically, it realizes over time. Uh, but when you take oral pill, it realizes once, and uh, plus, uh, I want to limit amount of medication I actually take uh, internally. Right? The only thing I do take uh, right now, or it has been so far, it has been just in Austria. Uh, so um, that's my take on it. So. Uh, all right. Uh, Eric asks about the being using South Metal for about six weeks. Now I notice that my hair falls stop and reduce stress uh, are very helpful. Yes, like again, if you do notice your hair shedding has uh, decreased uh, after six weeks of taking it because it usually takes around, um, for finasteride, it takes around six weeks to reduce DHT uh, on serum levels. Uh, for uh, natural DHT blockers, it uh, it usually takes longer. But at the same time, if you are early stages of the hair loss and, uh, uh, for example, uh, DHT, you don't have that much DHT sensitivity, then uh, six weeks uh, could also work, right? And, uh, as you mentioned here you also have less stress and it also has been very helpful so again congratulations uh, he'll ask, but what is the best method to heal the scalp inflammation first you need to figure out what is causing it right and uh, usually what is causing scalp inflammation is something in your diet right? so you have to do uh, diet changes you have to do detrification uh those are basically things you need to address and possibly you need to find uh, a medical shampoo uh, if there are issues with scalp itself right? and uh, that could be other thing to address and uh, of course topical applications uh, of uh, finding out uh, basically what, what is actually happening in your scalp right uh, is there too much sebum and for example in the major could be a good way to do it if there is uh, uh, for example uh, you need to calm down the scalp uh, then aloe vera could be something look into it rather you have to basically figure out what is causing your inflammation and the best way to approach it. So, uh, I had uh, like uh, Robin uh, wrote here that he had a uh, bad inflammation for years now uh, and uh, they here uh, become much mild, lighter in the middle and more damaged. I can't find a solution. Uh, and doctor says that it's uh, atopic dermatitis. Yes, like again, um, 
a question is if you have sold the information, uh, like if the information is sold and there is no implemented problems anymore in your scalp, then you can do a treatment uh, to estimate growth and picking up those here. But if the information is still there, then basically what happens is that uh, the, the treatment won't work. Uh, so basically you have to uh, make sure that uh, information is completely gone um, and then basically you can start to address it even if you are been having for example information issues in the past they still will be uh, you're still be able to solve them uh, and get uh, basically your hair back depending on time time frame how long you have been losing the hairs um, uh, also robin uh, you mentioned that scalp is flaky uh, and you thought it was shampoo or allergy to something you have to use shampoo for three weeks now no difference with or without shampoo um, yes, like again, it could be something internally that is affecting your uh, scalp flakes, right? And uh, scalp flakes, what kind of scalp flakes? Right? Because scalp flakes can also be seborrheic uh, dermatitis, for example, can also cause scalp flakes. So uh, you have to figure out basically what, what is the issue here. And then when it comes to shampoos, like you have medical shampoos, um, because everyday shampoo is most likely not going to solve the problem, right? So you have medical shampoos like Sufu shampoo, like uh, zinc shampoo. Uh, you, you have a sulfide shampoo, for example, of course, keto shampoo. But again, those shampoos depends on the context, on what is actually happening in your scalp, on which one is the best uh, approach to you. So, uh, Hilko asked about if I use topical steroids. Uh, I did it back in 2011. I actually did uh, use uh, Clovis Tulul on my scalp uh, for uh, several months. Uh, but the problem, like I mentioned earlier in the live stream, is that they can work very well for short-term uh, approach to the inflammation, but at some point one has to stop with them because they have a negative side effects and can affect the skin long-term, right? So basically one has to stop with them or cycle with the uh, kind of less strong ones, like a, a cycle between hydrocortisone and colbestulol. Uh, but again, that's not a long-term uh, solution. Right? So long-term solution is actually finding out what's causing inflammation in the first place unsolved right and then basically one uh, don't need to use any of those steroids on um, this is basically i did use steroids in 2011 i did use a couple of times 2012 but after 2012 i haven't used any steroids in my scalp so, because uh, i was able to uh, find out the cause of my problems that i was having and i sold them and afterwards basically it's not required to uh, to use them so next one uh question about uh hey i want to start with the next deal uh currently i'm here like hilas but i'm getting thin or going to think about two percent once a day for now yes again uh two percent is uh, quite light formulation and uh, for example if you um you, first of all, you would need to figure out what is actually causing hair loss, right? Because jumping on I minoxidil mean, right away without knowing uh, what is causing the hair loss may not necessarily be something that will work long term. Uh, so ideally, you should uh, find out what is actually making your hair look thinner. So, on the, have the shedding. So, uh, then I asked about my scalp is always kind of very light stones like a sugar cone before the strap. So, uh, could you? Uh, Redefine the question, uh, Leonard. I didn't understand this. One. Uh, question from uh, Gay about uh, is there a way to avoid shedding when starting with Nux deal? Uh, like, uh, yes, you need to strengthen your hair cycle. Right? Like, for example, if you are strong hair cycle and address DHT, of course, right? if you are address DHT and strong hair cycle and you don't have any other online problems, then a Minox deal shed will be minimal. Right? But if there are online problems, or your hair cycle is not strong, or you are not blocking DHTs, and basically applying minoxidil will cause um, most likely high shedding. That is unnecessary if you have taken take measures before. And so, uh, question from Leonard about uh, okay, you don't have white bulbs at the end of the hair, but still the itchy scalp. What do you say? Uh, white bulbs again, that's a different problem. Like if you just have itchy scalp, that it could be, for example. Um, that you have some micro information there. Uh, it doesn't have to be full blown information. So, uh, or it can be some dermatitis. So. Um, in any case, uh, I would need more information, uh, Leonard. Uh, like uh, it's hard to say because there's a dozen different things that can cause problems. 
uh, question about the why Finastri is also called uh, Propecia because Propecia is actually brand name uh, for Finastri for uh, like uh, Finastri it is active ingredients in Propecia right and I personally take Propecia uh, because uh, I find it uh, yeah, uh, like uh, in the past, when I first started with Finastri, there was only preparations that was available for the hair loss uh, back in 2008 uh, in my country. Uh, so I had to take it. Uh, but uh, nowadays I continue because I know that preparation is quality. I know that I'm getting actually Finastri on. It actually works. But yes. So, uh, guys, I will end for today's uh, live stream. Uh, once again, thank you for attending. And uh, I Hope everyone of you got uh, all of the information uh, regarding uh, why Finastri can stop working and what to do about it, basically by finding out the root cause of why it actually stopped working. And for you guys who are uh, looking to uh, having a call uh, with me to check out my program, here is a link for it. I'll add it in the chat now. Uh, and basically what I do in the program is that I um, simplify this issue by having right steps by defining what is actually the problem, why you're losing the ground, and help you to uh, address it, right? basically by changing diet, by changing supplementation, by getting a healthy scalp environment, by doing uh, detox, for example, and so on. Right? Basically, when you uh, find out what is the root cause of your hair loss, you are able to uh, get a control of the situation and uh, gain back here. So, all right, thanks for attending, guys.